Battery pack prices have hit their lowest point in history. However, even though they are now incredibly cheap compared to what they were 10 years ago, in fact, 89% cheaper, it's predicted that by 2030, the cost of the battery that goes into your electric car will have halved. It will come down by a further 50%. This year, the price of battery packs, battery cells, and lithium carbonate, or battery grade lithium have, have come down by an insane amount of money. I mean, nobody thought this would happen. Nobody thought batteries would be this cheap till the end of this year. Now, I've got to say, I, I have been trying to tell people battery prices will come down. And they have. In fact, since my last video on this exact topic, battery pack prices have gone down a further 14%. That's at the pack level. However, those numbers are actually probably understated because those come from an official company who measured the data about two months ago. Since that point, battery pack prices have come down even more than that. So a lot of people are saying, hey, um, Electric Viking, yeah, batteries are so much cheaper now, then why are EVs not so much cheaper? I mean, why is this big decrease in battery pack prices not meant EVs have come down an equally large amount? Well, there's a few reasons for this. Two main ones. I'm going to explain what those are. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. The price of lithium carbonate has come down around 50% this year. Battery pack prices are now sitting at the pack level at around 130 US dollars. Depends on what battery you're looking at. An LFP battery pack is around 120 US dollars. Then you've got a lithium ternary battery pack. So that's what most American EVs are coming with ternary batteries, except for, of course, the base model Tesla Model 3 and Model Y and the base model Mustang Mach-E. Those have LFP batteries. So either way, you can see here battery pack prices are actually very, very cheap. If you consider the fact that battery packs were costing 750 US dollars only seven years ago. So they've gone from 750 US dollars per kilowatt only seven years ago. And now we're looking at about $120. That's a huge difference. That's US dollars, by the way. So as you can see, the battery pack has come down in price enormously. So why are these discounts not being passed on. Well, first of all, they are, because look at how much the Tesla Model S cost to begin with. It was very, very expensive. And EVs in 2023 have been much cheaper than EVs were in 2022. That's true across the board. In fact, you've got to consider inflation. The cost of everything's gone up by around 10% worldwide over the past 12 months, but EV prices have come down. Almost all of them have come down. So first of all, it isn't true to say EVs are more expensive this year. They're actually cheaper, especially used. Used EVs are very, very cheap, but even new EVs have come down in price. So there's that. But yes, it's also true that the battery pack still makes up between 30 to 40% of the cost of making the vehicle. So really EV prices you would expect would come down even more. And there's one key reason why they have not. That is because... There's only really two companies worldwide that for the last two years have made a profit on electric cars. Now, BYD in 2020 didn't make a profit on EVs. In 2021, it made, some people say no profit, about broke even. In 2022, it made around 1,000 US dollars per car. And so far this year, it's made a few thousand. It's been up to double, if not triple, its, its actual profit on every EV it sells. Obviously, the same applies to Tesla. Tesla is also making a pretty decent profit on its electric cars. A few thousand dollars, depending on the model, depending on where they're made. It's very complicated, actually, because Tesla makes quite a lot of money on the EVs that it manufactures in China. Some people say it makes around 10,000 US dollars on every EV it makes in China. But then it's a very different number for the EVs that it manufactures in Germany and the United States. So it's quite confusing. You hear these overall numbers, but those overall numbers, such as Tesla's profit, they are misleading because it really depends on where their cars are being made, where they're being sold, and those give us different numbers overall. So regardless of that, there's only two car companies in the world making a profit on EVs, like I said, Tesla and BYD. Maybe Porsche does as well, maybe Rematch. You know, they're obviously not making many of them, but they price them pretty high. No one actually knows because Porsche and Rematch wouldn't actually mention it. But the Rematch Navira, of course, 
the most expensive electric car in the world, about $7 million. You would think they're probably making a profit as well. So I should include them. But everyone else is not. Everyone else is making enormous losses. Ford's losing $36,000 US dollars on every electric car it sells. You got Lucid losing about $500,000. You got you know, General Motors. They don't want to tell us how much they're losing, but we know they're losing money. Neo, they're losing about about twenty to 30000 on every electric car they sell. So basically, what this means is these companies, instead of losing astronomical amounts, they're losing big amounts. So the amounts that they're losing are just declining. Volkswagen lose money on every electric car we sell. We know that, but their losses are starting to come down. So as these battery pack prices continue to fall, yeah, EVs may get a little cheaper, and I suspect they will. I'd suspect range will increase as well for the same price. You'll probably get about the, uh, probably a 10 to 20% improvement in range over the next 12 months. But EV prices probably won't come down enormously. And it's for that key reason. These manufacturers, they're not making enough of them. Chinese CEOs of EV companies have said this. You need to make at least 500,000 EVs, right, of a particular model line to make a profit. Now, maybe they've exaggerated, but the point here is this. Legacy automakers don't make enough EVs yet. Moore's law, you need scale, you need product, you need huge production numbers to be able to amortize the cost. And right now, they're more of a boutique product. I mean, think of it this way, Mercedes-Benz, it has the highest proportion of EV sales as a car company. It's about sitting at about 16% over the past 12 months. That means 84% of the cars it sells are internal combustion. So it's clearly, even, even Mercedes-Benz are clearly not mass manufacturing electric cars in comparison to their other vehicles as a business, as a whole business. When that changes, when companies are making say 50% or more of their vehicles as electric cars, that's when they'll be able to make a profit. But it's getting to that point. That's the hard part. That's the part that analysts don't understand. It's very hard to get there. BYD made it look easy, but that's because they primarily exist in China. Huge car market, many millions of people wanting to buy uh, relatively affordable electric cars, and it worked out perfectly for them. But it's much, much harder if you're a legacy car company. So that's the long and the short of the answer to this question. The battery pack does not make up the whole price of the car, approximately 30 to 40%. Obviously, if it's something like a pickup truck, it would be closer to 40%. You need a real big battery then. If it's something like a smaller Tesla Model 3, it'd be around 30%. Anyway, let me know if you agree with my conclusions here in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.